Tuesday of Tears in Onitsha. Explosion claims lives. We thanks for attention and support our quest to minimize new domestic nets by empowering them to boost their existing businesses. Dark days of insurgency over. Bonu residents smile home with cash from government. The dental industry was able to attract private participation funding. Plus, hearing rooms still busy at the National Assembly. MDAs making cases for 2023 budget estimate. Hello and welcome to NTN Network News. I am Ian Ray John and we're live in Abuja. Adiola Komiakere joins me from Lagos. Thank you for joining us. And just to let you know that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website nta.ng slash live and all our social media platforms displayed on your screen for updates. We'll begin with our smiles tonight as a chemical explosion at Onicha Drug Market, Bridgehead, has killed unconfirmed number of persons with goods worth millions of naira gutted by fire. Utena Umokoyo has details. The fire was said to have started at about 12.30 p.m. Tuesday. The fire chief and director Anambra State Fire Service, Dr. Martin Abley, who confirmed the incident through a telephone call, said he deployed firefighters to the scene as soon as he received this rest call. Dr. Abley, who explained that the fire was as a result of chemical explosion, said they were yet to determine the number of casualties as rescue operation was still ongoing in Onicha. NTA News. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, says it has uncovered plans by some group of persons to introduce a little synthetic opioid, fentanyl, which is 100 times stronger than tramadol, into the Nigerian market. The agency is cautioning the public of the illicit substance, noting that it is capable of causing mass casualty among the youth population as being targeted by the cartels. The agency, however, says all necessary assets have been deployed to monitor the cartels involved in this latest threat. In other news, ahead of next week's Nigerian Economic Summit, an annual event where the public and private sector stakeholders deliberate on developmental issues, Vice President Imo Shibajo says focusing on pressing national issues with significance for the future should be the objective of the meeting this year. This was when Vice President Yemi Shibaja received a delegation of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group at a presidential villa. The NESG team briefed the Vice President on the agenda, particularly the theme of the 28th Nigerian Economic Summit 2023 and beyond, priorities for shared prosperity, stating the significance of the private sector's perspective to macroeconomic issues. The Vice President said it is important to always note what are the main concerns today especially about macroeconomics and how to deal with the issues and how to resolve these issues. Elsewhere, sustainable peace, stability and development is possible for Africa if leaders would incorporate the principle of adapting African solutions to Africa's problems. Former President of Nigeria, Olusegun Obasanjo, stated this while addressing the ongoing session of the Pan-African Parliament in Midrand, South Africa. Vivian Idekwefo reports. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo is addressing the Continental Parliamentary Body for the first time since he was appointed by the African Union to mediate peace in the Horn of Africa. With the successes recorded in Ethiopia and Tigray, the former president is concerned about an enduring solution that fosters assurance of security for all parties. You have to be friendly to all sides and whatever and also be patient because you will be accused of all sorts of things 
Former President Obasanjo says the African Union would make more impact by working in synergy with all organs and called on the Pan-African Parliament to be steadfast in carrying out its duties as outlined in its objectives. And this institution is not an unnecessary institution. It is an institution that should be part and parcel of the instrument that will lead us to the promised land. That is indispensable to the AU. The Pan-African Parliament is soliciting the support of the former president in getting member states to understand the importance of the legislative organ and ratify the Malabu Protocol. Vivian Itepe for NCA News. Back home and heading straight to the National Assembly, the Information and Culture Minister, Lai Mohammed, has appeared before the Senate Committee on Culture and Tourism to defend his ministry's 2023 budget proposal. Anthony Forsen reports. The minister opened his budget defense, explaining the cultural and tourism sector's mandate, which is anchored on promoting the people's culture and facilitating access by citizens to positive values. What the challenges his ministry faces on account of low funding and still striving. The pandemic, on the one hand, which affected this industry more than any other industry, and of course also the paucity of um, funds. For your excellency, sir, I want to say with all sort of humility that despite all this, the creative industry has done extremely well. Mr. Chairman, sir, I'm sure you are aware sir, that uh, for the first time, the creative industry was able to attract private participation funding to the tune of about 100 million US dollars to rehabilitate and renovate the National Theatre. And it's with pride, Mr. Chairman, sir, I announce here that Monday the 14th of this month, by the grace of God, we are going to declare open the first ever United Nations World Organization Global Conference on uh, Culture, Tourism, and the Creative Industry. And we are just going to take place in the iconic National Theatre. On 2022 budget, the minister lamented but concurred with questions asked by members of the committee. Excellency, you have spoken already to the challenges we are facing. I don't think I can improve on that. In that with COVID-19, with the poor funding, I mean, we, we could not do as much as we, we wish to do. It's unfortunate that uh, at, the, at the short time I've been in the Senate, um, the mid culture and tourism has not uh, attended this, uh, where it should be, attended this high because of this uh, insecurity and uh, COVID-19 and uh, poor funding. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Police Affairs and Agencies under the Ministry have a budgetary proposal of 871 billion naira for 2023. The Minister, Megare Dingyadi, at the Budget Defence Engagement with the Joint Senate and House Committee on Police, urged that the National Assembly should facilitate additional allocation for improved policing. National Assembly correspondent Lamiali brings us details. The minister is making the request to further improve infrastructure and logistics in all police formations across the country. The demand upon the ministry is to carry out its mandate of ensuring adequate security of lives and property in Nigeria. The provisions proposed for the task for this task in the year 2023, particularly for the main ministry and the police academy will deal, are considered inadequate. He gave details of budgetary releases to the Ministry for 2022. For purposes of implementation, actual releases to the main ministry in the 2022 budget as a date totaled about 1,701,000,000 naira. 
the synergy we've enjoyed with the committee on police affairs of both the two chambers. So we are really proud of you. The House Committee on Mines and Steel Development has the budget defense sitting with the Minister Olami Leko Adigbite was informed that the Ministry is working with the Office of the National Security Advisor to ensure enhanced security on activities in the sector. The National Security Advisor on his advice to the President that is a ban on mining Zapara. So, the National Security Advisor is aware of the problems of illegal mining and of course the attendant security courses and is working on a robust proposal. The most important issue this committee would like to raise during this budget hearing is how to revive the steel industry in the country. How is the 2023 budget of the ministry key to the revival of the steel industry in Nigeria? The budget proposal for the ministry for 2023 is 3.2 billion naira from the National Assembly. Lami Ali, NTA News. Away from the National Assembly now, in the face of multiple climate shocks, Nigeria is sourcing international support to ramp up finance for climate change adaptation plans and disaster risk reduction initiatives. It is a drive led by Nigeria's Ministers of Finance and Humanitarian Affairs at the United Nations Climate Conference in Egypt. On Nge, Fine Face reports. Nigeria's vast and unique landscape exacerbates at two weather events, resulting in forced migration and other humanitarian crises across the country. We address these issues, which is the adaptation aspect of it, whereby we support people to regain back their livelihoods, we support people to get adequate shelter as a result of the displacement. Beyond sourcing funds to respond and cope with the climate extreme, Nigeria hopes to break through cumbersome conditions in inhibiting access to available finance from the international community. We are setting up um, a global uh, sustainability financing standard and Nigeria is one of the early adapters and we are leading. In this regard, the objective is to be able to provide relevant disclosures in financial statements that will help us to um, attract investment finance for climate-friendly projects. Minister of Environment, Mohamed Abdullahi, also engaged the president of the Islamic Development Bank on opportunities for improving climate finance support to Nigeria. Climate Change uh, Council is supposed to develop what we call National Action Plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, it needs expertise, yeah. it needs conductors, it needs um, a lot of support, you know, from uh, the government banks like yours. The country is also ramping private sector investments in country to fund adaptation programs from Shamal Sheikh, Egypt, on NGA Fine Face and the news. We're from Egypt now. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs has promised to provide technical assistance to the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, for effective management of disasters across the country. Head of the Nigeria Office, Trond Jensen, stated this when he engaged the management of the agency on proactive ways of reducing the consequences of the menace. Ilyasu Yakubu reports. The UN OCHA delegation who commiserated with the government and people of Nigeria over what they describe as the most devastating flaws experienced in the history of Nigeria promised to render all the necessary assistance to NEMA. Mr. Trond particularly identified areas of the technical assistance which include training and retraining of NEMA staff for improved capacity. But what we are looking at is potentially then to provide support at the federal level, both in terms of assessments, uh, information management, some coordination support potentially, uh, as well as then 
with resource mobilization. Director General National Emergency Management Agency Mustafa Habib Ahmed says Neymar is interested in all the support it can get from all agencies to make it succeed in this wondrous task of managing disasters. I'm looking forward to the support of you and Ocha, both materially and through the sharing of your vast wealth of experience in global best practices in managing a complex emergency as we confronted with. The meeting deliberated on other issues concerning managing flooding in Nigeria. In Abuja, Elias Yakubu, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. Time for a break. Please stay. Thank you for staying. 9,100 small and medium scale entrepreneurs in Voronu State have benefited from the disbursement of 914 million 200,000 naira under the Voronu COVID 19 Action Recovery and Economic Stimulus Program Results Area 3. Governor Babaganao Marazalem, who flagged off the disbursement exercise at El Kanemi Warrior Sports Center, Maiduguri, pledged continued support to SMSCs. Mohamed Goni reports that the program is an initiative of the World Bank. <laughs> The 9,100 beneficiaries were drawn from three associations made up of tailors, tricycle riders, and GSM operators who are given operational support based on their business sizes and capital needs. Breakdown of the beneficiaries shows that 3,100 members of Borno State Association of GSM got 320 million naira, 4,000 members of Napier Riders 200 million naira, while 2,000 members of the Tailoring Association also got 100 million naira. There were also direct beneficiaries from Amalgamated Association of GSM receiving 70 million naira, as well as 24 operators of Kekena Pep collectively presented the sum of 24 million naira. We did it by thinking of a squad on a quest to minimize new selected nets by empowering them to put their existing businesses or pension to new businesses of their choice to enable them to become very brilliant and useful members of the society. The governor who assured them of continued support, also pledged to procure additional 3,000 tricycles and establish new expanded GSM market as well as thousands of tailoring machines among others. Commissioner for Youth and Social Development, Sain Nabuba, highlighted previous support extended to about 64 associations across the state to the tune of over 4.2 billion naira. Managing Director, Bornori Nizans and Microfinance Bank, Dr. Bello Ibrahim, charge the beneficiaries to reciprocate the gesture by helping in maintaining peace and harmony as well as utilize the cash for the purpose intended. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. We head to the courtroom where High Court of the Federal Capital Territory has dismissed the allegations of fraud and money laundering filed against a businessman, Benedict Peters, for being incompetent. The presiding judge, Justice Ulukayode Adeni, held that the British and Nigerian investigating agencies who investigated the claimant failed to establish their claim that assets seized from him in Nigeria and Britain actually belonged to former Petroleum Minister Diziani Alison Madweke. The court awarded 200 million naira damages jointly and severally against the prosecuting agencies in Nigeria and UK for victimizing Peters and restrained them from infringing on his personal liberty. Now talking security, the Nigerian army has commenced exercise around Zaki. What is the implication on emerging threat and where is the location for the military exercise? Defense correspondent Ismail Musa, who gave us details. A group of the 6th Brigade Nigerian Army at the Land Forces Immigration Center, Giri Abuja, venue for exercise Rawanzaki. Rawanzaki is the code name for this military exercise involving the deployment of technologies for enhanced capacity building and force multiplication. Simulation exercises test the capability of an organization and other complementary entity to respond to simulated emergency, disaster or crisis situation. Different softwares were used to create real-time scenario to further develop these troops in the ongoing onslaught against terrorists. 
exercise Raman Zaki is intended to bring out the relevance of quick decision making in the art of war. In order to achieve this, the exercise will simulate a joint task force brigade comprising an integrated force of military, police, and other security agencies in planning, preparation, and conduct of military operation other than war using the MASASOP software. Details of the training were carried behind scenes from the Land Forces Simulation Center in Giri, Abuja. Ismail Musa, NTA News. The federal government says 5 million Nigerians have been provided with renewable electricity generated in the off-grid sphere across the country under the Nigeria Electrification Project, NAP. A statement released on the level of implementation of the project shows that more than 900,000 solar home systems, 67 minute grid projects and 26 container solar energy parks for hospitals have been deployed to the benefiting communities. The World Bank and African Development Bank are supporting the project with a grant of $550 million so as to boost electricity across access in the country, especially with renewable energy. The implementation of the Nigeria Electrification Project, the federal government says, has so far created 1,151 jobs and saved more than 200,000 tons of carbon dioxide. Rural Electrification Agency is implementing the project. The project government is to establish a letter processing center in Doma, Nasarawa State, in view of availability of raw materials. The Director General of the Nigeria Institute of Letter and Science Technology, Mohamed Kabir Yakubu, revealed this when he visited Governor Abdullahi Sule in Lafia. Aliyu Tijani reports. Ability of height and skin in Nigeria, mostly consumed as POMO. The Nigerian Institute of Leather and Science Technology says such raw material can be processed into leather materials for domestic use and export. The Director General of the Institute, Mohamed Yakubu, informed Governor Abdullah Isle that federal government is exploring the raw materials through establishment of leather processing center for job creation and revenue generation. When established in Duma, the leather processing center, the Director General says, will create jobs for teaming youths in the state. You know, the, the training in uh, leather and leather products is not something that requires a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, time. By the time we show you what our students that are trained from scratch for one month, you'll be surprised actually how they have come. Because some of the things they produce can be marketed anywhere in the world. It is going to be our youth that will be trained and they will later on become entrepreneurs, you know, and then eventually it's for the economic development of the state. So if we are going to get all these three, well, why not? We'll definitely look at this year proposal of yours and see how we can uh, uh, enjoy the partnership. In Lafia, Aliu Tijani, NTA News. Asu is back in the news, and this time the Academic Staff Union of Universities has expressed worry overpayment of 18 days in October 2022 salaries to its members. In a statement, President of the Union, Emmanuel Usudeke, posits that the National Executive Council of the Union describes the development as unprecedented in the history of university-oriented labor relations and therefore frowns at the government's attitude to reduce what they called scholars to casual workers. While appealing for understanding of students, parents, and other concerned Nigerians, the union wishes to pursue positive resolutions within the ambit of the law so as not to get into avoidable crisis. The Nigerian Television Authority and Nigeria Health Watch, a non-government organization, have committed to a partnership that will push advocacy towards greater financial commitment of the Nigerian government in the health sector. Ekene Ndule. Brings us status. Issues of poor infrastructure, inadequate health workers, and medications have become common narrative associated with Nigeria's primary health system. But those solutions are across every specter of our. Vivian uh, Inhekwazu is the managing director of Nigeria Health Watch and improving funding in the health sector 
is the target of her organization. So part of the work we also do is ensure that all the health programs are adequately funded. We know that um, our health outcomes are not the best. So channels at NTA are critical in terms of working with um, NGOs, working with multilateral partners to ensure that um, our health sector is adequately funded. It is a noble agenda, says Dr. Damian Bayi who is representing the NTA Director General at the meetings, promising that NTA will provide the platform to effect positive policy change in the sector. We'll partner with you, we'll collaborate with you, and we'll provide our platforms for your activities, for you to showcase to Nigerians uh, the, your activities. The partnership has been forged, and as the delegation from the Nigeria Health Watch takes their leave, there is no doubt in their minds that this is a win for the Nigerian public. Ekene Ndulwe, NTA News. We now pause here in Abuja and let Adeola feed us with more news. Adeola, it's over to you. Thank you, Yere, and welcome to Lagos. Foremost in multinational mobile telecommunications company, MTN, is set to transform another batch of 150 female entrepreneurs with relevant business plans from the grassroots to becoming a millionaire. Diana Jala reports that this is through the company's Yellow Premier Initiative in Lagos. And Foundation presents the Yellow Premier Initiative. Since coming on board in Nigeria over 20 years ago, MTN has continued to blaze the tree in the telecommunications sector from youth empowerment, student scholarship to mother and child health care. You can count on MTN in their operational community activities, not resting on its oars. MTN has again added a new initiative to its kitty called Yellowpreneur. Good. MTN management says this is targeted All towards empowering women economically and reducing that, unemployment um, rates. Really like. A proof this. that the mobile telephone network operator is aligning with the federal government's sustainable development goals agenda. It's all about ensuring that women take their place in the economic development of Nigeria. Women constitute over 50% of the um, population and, and we try to encourage women to take their rightful place in the society. I feel it's the right thing at the right time and um, an opportunity for women like myself to take advantage of and for this, of course, a big ups to MTN for this. A total of 42,000 entries were received from across the six geopolitical zones of the Federation, out of which 500 selected entries will be allowed to take part in the project, a free online entrepreneurship capacity training. After the mind-blowing virtual training, 150 best business plan owners will be given 2 million Naira equipment loan. 75% of the funding is a loan and 25% is a grant, but you can only access the grant after you when you paid down 75 percent to provide this funding to support to young women nigeria women in order to hone their skills promote entrepreneurship create wealth for people create jobs for people and create wealth for, for the country and grow the country gdp beneficiaries include fashion designers female farmers manufacturers ict and digital services in lagos diana ajale nta news the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, the official liquidator of the defunct Post Service Hope Savings and Loans Limited, have begun the process of carrying out verification of depositors' liquidation in order to facilitate payment claims. The public notice was made by the managing director of the corporation, Belo Hassan, at the commission's special appearance at the ongoing 36th Lagos International Trade Fair. In an era full of uncertainty and economic sabotage, especially in the financial sector, it is important for the banking community to take seriously the issue of safety. This is why the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, has been offering a strong backbone to the payment system to connect businesses and help create value that impacts the citizenry. 
Its presence at this year's Lagos International Trade Fair is not only to sensitize the public, but build investors' confidence in the financial system. The corporation therefore advises all eligible depositors of 20 defunct banks in Nigeria to come forward and make claims for their money with full guarantee. We have realized some of the assets of these banks in liquidation, and we are here and we are ready to pay the outstanding, which will make it that depositors of these 20 banks in liquidation will, will collect their money 100%. They have left nothing uncollected. President, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, said NDIC's presence at the fair will increase relevance of deposit insurance stability. The beauty of their coming here is also an assurance for investors, participants at the fair, uh, bankers, and even ordinary people who invest in banks or who keep money in banks. Since 1988, the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, as a critical component of the nation's financial system safety net, has the mandate of deposit guarantee, banking supervision, failure resolution, and bank liquidation. In Lagos, Ruth Ario Samuel, NTA News. We're done from the Center of Excellence. The network news will continue after this time out, but do be reminded that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other verified social media handles displayed on the screen for updates. To stay on. Welcome back. Let's now talk business and uh, the businessman is here. Thank you, Henry, and welcome to business. We'll start by telling you that the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Patricia Scotland, is of the view that the deployment of technology and data is needed to accelerate human capital, social and economic development of the Commonwealth at a time of global uncertainty. Scotland was speaking at the first ordinary session of the sixth Pan-African Parliament in South Africa. Putting our member countries with technical analysis, advice and assistance, especially through our connectivity agenda for trade and investment, to help them exchange best practice and experiences in trade investment, undertake domestic reform, and speak with one voice within global trade negotiations. But third, to maximize our success, we must maximize our ability to deploy technology. Harnessing data is essential. Take a look at the markets. Nigerian stocks traded in beers as a total of 249.9 shares in 3,283 deals, corresponding to a market value of 2.5 billion shares were traded. Compared with the previous trading day, today's data shows 142% improvement in volume, 17% improvement in turnover, and 2% improvement in deals. The current market capitalization is 23.7 trillion naira. Access Holdings recorded the highest volume of 129 million traded shares, followed by FBN Holdings 19.5 million, Transcap Nigeria 17.4 million, and Fidelity Bank 14.9 million. That is Business News. Network News continues with Yeri. Yeri, it's nice doing business with you. Many thanks, uh, Benny. Let's now talk politics. The Parliamentarians Committee of the 2023 Tinubu Shatima Presidential Campaign Council has acknowledged improved security across the country as motivation to seek for more votes, particularly from the North East. The committee has commenced engagement with APC stakeholders from the zone. Salihu Guanara reports. The concern here is how to woo more voters in North East which distinguish itself as the political zone with the second highest number of voters and the APC's vice presidential candidates. That's why we are here mobilizing, strategizing. We have a product that is sellable, product that has what we call quality. And the quality of product determines its own marketability. So I can assure you that by the grace of God, everything will be okay. And from what is happening in the entire of the North East, North East is APC zone. And uh, definitely we know 
what we need to do is to work a little bit. We deliver the entire North East to uh, Aswajibola Ahmetinim. The bottom-up approach by the committee is targeted at the legislative arm of government at all levels. In Abuja, Salu Gonara, NTA News. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party in Benue State has flagged off its campaign with assurance of overwhelming victory for all elective positions in the state. Governor Samuel Autumn made this known during the flag off of the party's campaign in Mokodi. Charles Abba reports that the governors of Rivers, Abia, Enugu and all your states were in attendance. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, faithful in their thousands converged on IBB Square, Makudi, to witness the flag off of the campaign with Governor of River State, Nyasongwike, that of Abia, Okezie Ikbazu, Enugu, Ifani, Uguani, and Oyo, Sei Makinde in attendance. Benue State Acting Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Isaac Mpo, who performed the ceremony, presented the party's flag to the governorship candidate, Taito Suba, Governor Samuel Otom, Benway Northwest, Gabriel Suswan, Benway Northeast, and Abba Patrick Mero, Benway South, as well as House of Representatives and State Assembly candidates. We shall win our election with dignity and we will win and we shall win and we will win. We did it! This is not a different gift for the people of Senators Gabriel Suswam and Abba Patrick Merrill are sure that the PDP would come out stronger from its internal wranglings to deliver block votes for the victory of the party from bottom to top in 2023. NTA News. In other news, the need to highlight the responsibilities and challenges in the operations of special marshals with a view to redefining their safety in a course of duty has been brought to the fore. This was at the 2022 Special Marshals Conference organized by the Federal Road Safety Corps, Zone RS8, held in Iloring, the Kwara State Capital. Aisha Abubakar Yahaya reports that the theme for the conference is the responsibility of special marshals in the face of a new administration in the Corps. Special marshals are members of the voluntary arm of the Federal Road Safety Corps, comprising of men and women of proven integrity who are engaged in other fields of endeavor with legitimate means of livelihood, but have chosen to assist uniformed members of the Corps in performing their duties. The annual conference of the special marshals is therefore to hold every other year to, among other things, allow marshals in zones gather to take stock and evaluate their performances with a view to identifying their strengths, weaknesses, as well as opportunities for improving their mode of operation. We redefined special machines operational modalities with a view to ensuring that they deliver in their mandate. Sean corruption to determine the vigorous in their drive to ensure that the roads are safe as a road machine. How I uh, assist the people in the road safe. Given us seminar like this, we give us the wider scope of our responsibility. Individuals and organizations that have contributed to the growth of special marshals were awarded, while new members were also inaugurated. Aisha Bwakar Yahaya, NCA News. Yes, the Let's have more on sports now as we have a quick update on the National Sports Festival ongoing in Asaba. Royal Hotel Asaba, the venue of the long tennis games for the Delta 2022 event, has three long tennis courts. The court looks set for the competition. The fittings, including the upper's position, are ready. The tennis court completed, 90% completed. So it just small, small, just little, little things that need to be that need to be put in place. So before the the event, I'm quite sure not representative. Over 100% prepared because it is not just competing and 
happening in the world, you know, it is a thing of pride now for Delta State Athletes. Over the years, we have always been number one. And now that we are hosting, we would like to retain that pride. Recently, the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Darren, inspected some of the facilities ahead of the Games. He commended the state government's doggedness in ensuring that the venues are up to standard. Um, I think this level of commitment to sports infrastructure have you know, it's beginning to come up as a culture. We've seen Delta State take it to, uh, you know, a bit a higher notch, and I think this is impressive. And I'm sure that uh, the next two weeks will be breathtaking as we try to make the tape. We will keep a close tab. We will be here, and I'm sure that Delta is ready. The National Sports Festival is built from November 28th to December 10, 2022. I am Godfrey Nzekwe, MT News. The death has been announced of Chief Jubilee Karuta Apuridu, aged 94. Chief Jubilee Karuta Apuridu hailed from Ugeli South local government area of Delta State and was a long-time resident of Jos, the Plata State capital, where a street named after him for his contributions to the development of the city still exists. He was also a board member of the Plata State Sports Council and the Plata State Industrial Development Appeal Fund, as well as a prominent member of the Urubu Progressive Union, UPU, for which he won a long service award. He survived by a wife, nine children, grand and great-grandchildren. Chief Jubilee Karuta Aquarido will be buried on 12th November in his place of birth, Opari Ulumu, in Delta State. And that concludes NTA Network News tonight. Many thanks for watching. Here's a quick reminder that rape is a crime. Speak up and take action. I'm Ian Ray John. Do have a good night.